I know it's very hard for you to make a decision when it comes to deciding should I upgrade my graphics card or should I buy this graphics card or that graphics card. Well, that's where I try to help you. Just a simple man with simple reviews. Here to talk about the RX 7700 XT. It's got 12 gigabytes of VRAM and at the time of recording this video, it's recently dropped down to as low as 399. That's just under $400 and that's pretty cheap for standards of graphics cards released these days. And we want to know, is it going to perform the way that you want it to. Of course, with any benchmarking review, you're going to have to take into consideration what is your CPU versus the CPU that I'm using. And I'll be using the i5-12600K in this video. With 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM, we're testing it in some of the most popular games here in 2024, and let's see, you know, if the performance is up to snuff. In all of these benchmarks, we will be running 1440p because this graphics card is perfect for you to finally make that jump from 1080p to 1440p, but let's make sure you get the numbers you want. First up, we tried Call of Duty Warzone. We played the Resurgence game mode. We used ultra settings with no upscaling whatsoever, and we got a very respectable FPS number. It stayed anywhere from 130 to like 150 but most of the time the FPS average I would say it was closer to that 140 FPS mark which gives it really close to 144 FPS monitor and 1440p monitors are coming down in price and becoming extremely affordable but just to see how well this graphics card actually performs with the new FSR 3.0 we actually wanted to enable that with the ultra settings to see how it boosted our FPS and we got a whopping 170 FPS so it gave us about you know 20 to 30 fps more now for me i'm not a competitive gamer so you know i didn't really notice any of the input delay or anything like that someone who's more subject to that sort of thing can probably tell in all the milliseconds but i'm a boomer and i just can't but we're not done because we wanted to also try frame generation that's a new thing with amd and if your cpu is good enough you can really crank out those frames with frame gen and we got a whopping 270 fps average when we turned on frame generation in resurgence that's, that's really awesome now your cpu will affect how much you get with frame gen even like higher level gpus if your cpu is a bottleneck with amd frame gen you're gonna get less frame so keep that in mind before you make any crazy decisions next up we wanted to try cyberpunk 2077 this title typically runs better on nvidia gpus but we just wanted to see what it was like with and without ray tracing so we tried the ultra settings first no ray tracing whatsoever and we got 76.43 as an fps average on their built-in benchmark then we tried ray tracing overdrive but here we use the default settings. We did not use upscaling in the first run without ray tracing, but because ray tracing is so demanding, especially on budget cards, we just use the default max ray tracing settings, which does by default enable FSR, and we were able to get 24.48 as our FES average. Moving on to try to liberate some space aliens, we tried Helldivers 2. Maximum settings, native resolution, so no upscaling. The maximum, or the I guess we use the ultra preset. I can't say for sure that it's maximum i didn't go make sure everything was turned to max so just the ultra presets for hell divers 2 liberating some space aliens we got 77 fps plenty of frames to squish those bugs we used a couple of more story based type games for you just to you know kind of give you an idea of what these AAA titles are going to be like horizon forbidden west just moved to pc not too long ago and it's fairly demanding for you know some graphics cards but at 1440p maximum preset settings whatever those are on horizon forbidden west we use those and we got 85 fps which is you know pretty respectable i would be happy with that if that were my graphics card then we moved on to the new crisis i mean i mean starfield sorry can't help it it has become more optimized though it's not you know as crazy as it was on launch but it does favor amd gpu so we decided to go to new atlantis that's been in the comment section of a lot of my tiktoks and youtube shorts that when we test starfield we need to go to new atlantis because that is the most demanding place in starfield and so we ran around the map for a few minutes and we got an average fps of 55. moving on we tried some more competitive games like halo infinite we used high settings not completely maxed out settings just high settings because you do want some fps if you're playing a pew pew game you know like halo infinite and we got a pretty respectable 140 fps at 1440p mind you so i think that's pretty awesome if you're liking this graphics card so far and you want to pick one up there is a link in the description a lot of different models to choose from 
Just keep in mind it's an affiliate link. Moving on, we tried some newer titles like The Finals, which is a game that runs on the Unreal Engine 5. It's pretty demanding on your CPU and your GPU, so keep that in mind when you know watching these benchmark videos, trying to make that decision, should I buy it or should I not? The Finals, we used Epic settings, just whatever the default settings were. You do use some FSR when playing the finals. That's just kind of the default for that. And we got anywhere from like 110 to 130 FPS. This game's really weird and I'm not very good at it. We also tried the new game X Defiant released by Ubisoft. They like did a beta a long time ago, but now they've re-released it. That took a long time. It's kind of weird, but we used whatever their ultra preset settings were, except, you know, we turned V-Sync off because they turned V-Sync on by default. So be careful with X Defiant. Make sure you turn off V-Sync. You can just manually cap the FPS if you want it capped. And we got 152 FPS, which is pretty solid. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, some of the more popular games, we did try Apex Legends. We got 240 FPS. We maxed all those settings out. That was super awesome. Apex Legends, still a game that a lot of people are loving. And I've heard good talks about the latest season of Apex Legends, although I don't play Apex. Again, pretty bad at it, so yeah. Apex Legends 240 FPS, you could, you know, probably get more if you lowered it, but Apex Legends caps at 300, so 240 is really all you should look for. Moving on, everybody's favorite battle royale, good old Fortnite. Everybody loves to know, you know, Fortnite FPS. Even though Fortnite FPS will be better depending on your CPU, you still need a decent graphics card. In Fortnite, you kind of have to make a decision. Do I run DX12 or do I run performance mode? We did get more frames in performance mode with a 295 FPS average but our one percent lows were kind of down there you know they they kind of go in like the 40s 50s 60s range but dx12 we give up some fps but we give you know a, we get a more stable one percent low and our fps average was 240 fps here in fortnite so overall the rx 7700 xt looks pretty dang good for only four hundred dollars 1440p but you let me know what you think down in the comments but if you're not sold you can go check out this video